Hi, my name is Neil McMillan. I'm the Minister at Cornerstone here in Morningside in Edinburgh. I hope you had a good Christmas. Uh, however you spent it, it's probably not what you'd hoped for or anticipated. But I do hope that somehow you found uh, an opportunity to rest, uh, to relax and to think more about who Jesus is and why he came into the world. I'm going to read an introduction to our worship and it's a, a call, an invitation from Jesus. To all who are weary and need rest, to all who mourn and long for comfort, to all who feel worthless and wonder if God even cares, to all who are weak and fail and desire strength, to all who sin and need a saviour. This church opens wide her doors with a welcome from Jesus, the mighty friend of sinners, the ally of his enemies, the defender of the indefensible, the justifier of those who have no excuses left, the friend of sinners. Welcome. We're going to begin our uh, worship this morning by singing a song that's called Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. So whatever you are this morning or whenever you're watching this, join in if you can, sing along, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. Still my lips shine. 
Thank you. We're going to pray now. Uh, I'm going to say a short prayer and invite you to join with me as I do so. Living God, we are here today to, to recognise your goodness to us, that you're the God who sent his son Jesus into this world to become uh, God incarnate, the saviour of the world. We ask that uh, you'd lift us from the, the difficulties we might face or the, the things that are playing in our mind right now and the distractions that we inevitably will have and that you will lift our, our thoughts and minds to focus them on the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask that in this time of worship, we would be given and gifted uh, a sense that God is with us, that the Lord is near, and that you would be to each of us our comforter, our strength, our joy, and our hope. Shine the light of your face on us as we worship together this morning. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke and chapter 2. Uh, so Luke chapter 2, I'm going to read from verse 21 to verse 40. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She'd lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Amen. This is the reading of God's word. We uh, want to give praise to God again in song. So we're going to sing now um, a psalm, Psalm 126. So sing along at home if you can, Psalm 126. Thank you. we 
to take another moment to pray together again so please uh, join me once more as we come in prayer before God. Living God help us to enter into your presence with a sense of adoration, a sense of uh, wonder uh, to be coming before a God who created the heavens and the earth and everything in them. The God who gave us music, who gave us taste and flavour, who gave us colour and brightness. The God who set the stars in place and who spread out the canopy of the heavens. The God who created the, the animal kingdom in all its wonder and beauty. The God of the depths of the ocean. The God who's given life to humanity, creating us in his own image. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of life. Live before your face. We know that one day we will return to you and uh, that one day you will judge the living and the dead. Make each of us ready for that great day when we stand before you. We ask, Lord, that as we remember your goodness and glory, that we'd also uh, just be comforted by your promises of forgiveness. Lord, we confess that there's so much about our, our lives that is uh, out of order, out of line, uh, that we've gone astray, that we've turned away from the path that you've set before us, that there's a failure within us to love you and to love others as we ought to love them, uh, that our lives are uh, marred by greed, by anger, by bitterness, uh, by, by lust, by lies, by uh, worshipping the wrong kind of things. 
We ask, Lord, that you would um, come to us now and take away the weight, the guilt, and the shame of our sin. Make us clean through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for every good gift that we receive, for gifts that we might have received over uh, Christmas time, for presents that people have given to us. Uh, but we thank you most of all for the gift of your Son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that he came to seek and to save the lost. That's us, and we praise you that because Jesus came seeking us, we know that when we seek his face, we will find him. So we ask that today we would want to meet with you more than anything else in life. We all of our various priorities, different things that we pursue in, this, in, in the hope of finding rest or happiness or peace or fulfilment. But Lord, if we pursue these things and neglect to pursue you, we know that we will be uh, chasing uh, emptiness and vanity. Lord, we, we want to cry out to you for our city of Edinburgh. We thank you so much for it. We pray for all who are suffering at this present time uh, through um, COVID-19 and all the problems, the loss, the struggle that it's created around us and in us and for us. And we pray that you would be with those who feel most under pressure at this time or most broken by these circumstances. May the light of your goodness and hope shine into their lives and help those of us who are believers to come alongside those who are suffering. Show us ways to do that so that we can offer help and support and love and hope. We pray, Lord, for those who have been bereaved that in sadness and grief and sleepless nights and lonely moments that they would know that the Lord is their comforter that you're the one who comes to strengthen, to, to, to renew and to, to help those who feel heavily burdened. May each of us find rest in you this morning. We pray for those who are struggling with anxiety, uh, those who are struggling with loneliness, uh, those who are missing family and friends at this time of year. God, please, Help us to trust you with the difficult circumstances we face, to not lose hope, but to know that you will sustain us and give us strength day by day to keep going. And as we navigate through these difficulties and through the challenges of life, we pray that we would fix our eyes on Jesus, that we would follow you, Lord Jesus, and go in your path, because we know that your way is the way of life, the way of hope, and the way of peace. Bless us now, we ask. Uh, bless your word as we think about what it has to say to us this morning and lift up our heads, lift up our eyes and fix them on Jesus Christ. Fill our hearts and minds with your truth and with the goodness of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to look together now at um, the second chapter of Luke and the verses that I read from earlier. Uh, when my children were a bit younger, we made several trips to uh, Disneyland Paris. And the uh, only time I've ever been on roller coasters was, was at Disneyland. And um, jump on, slightly anxious, but quite happy. And then uh, once I'm halfway through the ride... Holding on, thinking, man alive, what am I doing here? This, I thought, was supposed to be fun. My head's bouncing about like a bagatelle or a pinball. Uh, my stomach's in my mouth. And uh, there's, there's a little bit of pleasure, but there's a lot of just like, man, don't really love this. Um, roller coasters. Some people love them. Lots of people dread them. Uh, I'm sure 2020 has felt a bit like a roller coaster for most of us. Hurtling along, pausing briefly at the top of a cliff before crashing downwards again. And as we get into the Gospel of Luke and begin to read what Luke has written for us in these first couple of chapters, uh, it, there's, a, there's a little bit of that, I think, in, in the way that Luke is setting up the story of the life of Jesus. 
that actually it's not going to be all sweetness and light and, and a smooth road and an easy path. There's going to be a lot of variations, a lot of up and a, a lot of down. Uh, the way of Jesus turns out to be a hard and bumpy road. Uh, the way of Jesus brings duff, suffering and darkness and hard things. And uh, that's life for all of us in this world, I think. And it's life even for those of us who are Christians. Things will always be harder than we expected in ways that we didn't even predict. But the good news that Luke wants to sow into the depths of our, our thoughts and our hearts is this. That in the turmoil, there's light, there's salvation, there's hope. Because at the centre of, of all of that, and at the centre of the story, is Jesus. He is the calm in the storm. He's strength for the weak. He's rest for the weary. He's joy for the broken. And so Luke's invitation as he draws us into the story of Jesus is to become part of that story ourselves to intertwine our lives with the life of Jesus Christ himself, to become followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we, we, we read through chapter 1 and chapter 2 of the Gospel of Luke, and we read in the, the narratives around the birth of John the Baptist and the birth of Jesus and the shepherds and the angels, um, one of the things that um, Luke is doing is giving us the portrait of a king. So that's one, one thing I'll think about with you for a little while. The portrait of a king that Luke is painting. But then he's also um, painting a portrait of the people who follow the king. So that's the second thing. There's a portrait of a king. There's a portrait of his people. And then I'm also going to just sort of think with you a little bit about how we then look at this picture and, and paint our own lives with the love of Jesus. So we've got the portrait of a king. Uh, Luke is framing a picture for us of the coming of the king of kings, the long-awaited saviour of Israel. Uh, at the beginning of chapter 2 he mentions Caesar Augustus who's uh, organising a census of his entire empire. But Jesus is presented to us as a greater king than even Caesar. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's come from heaven. He's the true King of the world. And so we might think that this, that this painting is simply going to be a painting that's full of, of grandeur and magnificence and, and majesty and power. But the painting isn't going to look that way at all, is it? It's a, it's a good painting. It, it's um, very accurate. Uh, we... Luke is somebody who's interested in, in representational detail, uh, real characters, real locations, real geography. So there's a lot of realism in the painting. There's history and fact, but the colour palette, the colours splashed over the canvas, they're dark. In many places, they're the colours of suffering and pain. This is not all warm Mediterranean colours. It's not a triumphalistic painting. The mood, the tone that Luke creates is different from that. And it's a painting that invites us in. We're, we're drawn into this story. The story of Jesus with its sombre colours covering the canvas. And as we're drawn into the story of Jesus, uh, one thing Luke wants to say is, Brace for impact. There's going to be hard things ahead. I actually find this quite a difficult passage in some ways. And I think what, what always causes me pause, the, the, the bit in this passage that I, I always sort of stumble over, are um, the words of Simeon to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Uh, where in verse 35, he says to Mary, a sword will pierce your own soul too. He predicts tragedy, grief, suffering for Mary. I find that difficult. Um, it rattles me. Uh, the, the, 
the picture that Simeon paints is of a, a long sword. And he says, this long sword, Mary, will pass through your soul. That does make me brace for impact. Uh, a mother's grief over a lost child is heartbreaking. There is nothing quite that will tear your heart like watching a mother grieve for her lost child. And that's what Simeon is describing. That's what Luke's writing about and recording for us. Luke's giving us a, an accurate and honest account of the life of Jesus. And into that life, because of the honesty of the narrative, comes this ominous note. Mary, Jesus says, you will suffer bitterly. Anguish of your soul. Because you'll see your own son facing an unjust and violent death. So Luke is already alerting us, isn't he? That the portrait of this great king, the king of the world, is astonishingly also a portrait of suffering and grief and rejection and hardship. A king who will divide people. Some will love him, but many will speak against him. And so Luke says, be prepared that as you follow the story of Jesus, you're going to come up against hard things, sad things, confusing things, and dark things. And so as we enter the story of Jesus anew at this Christmas, we need to be ready for the hard things ahead. There's hard stuff behind us, isn't there, in 2020? And we might just be thinking, give us a break. But life isn't quite like that. And there are also not only hard things behind us, but hard things ahead. Hard things ahead as we read the story of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke, but also as we consider our place in the story of Jesus or in the story of this world. So there's a portrait of Jesus, um, the king, and I said also I wanted to think about the portrait of his people that Luke paints for us. So um, I haven't been at the, the, the National Portrait Gallery uh, for a long time, but it's, it's down there um, in the new town, and uh, all these amazing portraits of many great and different characters from many different uh, times and eras. And what Luke has done, I think, in his gospel, uh, think about it this way, if you will, has created a portrait gallery. Um, Lots of different kinds of individuals that he pictures for us who become a part of God's people and God's story in this world. Who become part of his kingdom. So hanging on the wall of chapter 1 in Luke's gospel, we have an old priest, Zechariah, and his wife, Elizabeth. And then their baby, uh, John the Baptist. Uh, also in the gallery in chapter 1 is the painting of a young virgin and her fiancé, Joseph. In chapter 2, there are portraits of shepherds, weather-beaten, scruffy, a bit dodgy-looking, shady. And then, now, in the same portrait gallery in chapter 2, we have Simeon and Anna, elderly, devout and godly. Very different-looking kinds of people from the shepherds. Simeon, a man who's been waiting for consolation from God over many hard and difficult years for him and his people. Anna, a woman who buried her husband while she was still in her 20s and has been waiting ever since for the redemption of Israel, her city. So Luke provides these, these portraits, doesn't he? Of real life characters, young and old, Insiders and outsiders, urban and rural, male and female, religious, non-religious, rich and poor. Jesus' family. In this story, they offer the sacrifice uh, of devotion for Jesus. It's the sacrifice that poor people uh, had to offer. And so what we, we find in the portrait gallery that Luke is, 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 is hanging all these pictures in are such a variety of, of people and characters. 
And he's saying there's a place for all kinds of people in the kingdom of God. And I wonder, perhaps, if you can see your own picture hanging there in the gallery of those who belong to the kingdom of God. Because Luke wants to say, if you, if, if, if you want your story to be part of the story of Jesus, if you want to, 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 to go in that way, to follow in the path of Jesus Christ, then because Jesus' story is dark and tumultuous, then our story will become dark and tumultuous. To be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus, is not to take the easy way. It's going to be a lot tougher than it looks from the outside. We need to know that ahead of time. So that when the hard things come, we're not thrown, we're not discouraged, we don't lose heart. Because understand this, the lows will be lower than you could have ever anticipated. The tears of the Christian life will be more frequent. The hard things will be so much harder. Now, we can grasp that because if we've read the Gospels, and they're worth reading if you haven't, we know that Jesus says, come and follow me, take up your cross. But still that can't prepare us quite for the shocking realities that our own lives will present to us. Harder than anything that we imagined. Yes, we know we're going to have to be patient and persevere. And we imagine that this will go on for a while. But perhaps we don't realise that sometimes it will go on year after year, decade after decade. That some struggles will never leave us in this life. That some things won't get sorted or just go away. That to be a Christian is often to live with hard things all the way to the end. A sword will pierce your soul, Mary. She never got over that. To see her son crucified on a cross, she didn't move on, did she? There would be a wound and a grief in Mary's heart for all the rest of our life. Jesus, exalted and ascended into heaven, he bears the scars of his suffering still. So to be a Christian is to take a hard road. It's to take a difficult road. Many spoke against Jesus and many speak about Christ- against Christianity today. The ethics of being a Christian in the 21st century Scotland is challenging, isn't it? Many speak against Christianity because of what the Bible shows us in terms of sex or gender or the beginning of life or the end of life. So much of what we uh, know the Bible to teach uh, goes against what our culture holds as true or precious. So being a Bible-believing Christian in Scotland in the 21st century puts you out of step with the culture. People will speak against what we think. But although we're out of step with the culture, the important thing is to be in step with God, to be following the way of Jesus. So there is hardship. There are these sombre colours in the, in, in the paintings. How do we find peace in the face of this, the, these hard things? Um, if we're feeling battered and bruised by 2020 and, and fearful of 2021, where do we go? Well, I want to say this. Paint your life with the love of Jesus. Cover your life. Cover your story with the love of Jesus. Paint your life with the love of Jesus. Simeon prophesies and he says, my eyes have seen your salvation. To see Jesus is to see God's salvation. And when we see this, it makes our lives complete. Because we know God loves us and he he loves us so deeply that he has sent his son to be our saviour. This is our peace. Salvation is a big word in the Gospel of Luke. 
And now in Jesus, God's promised saviour is present. And so Simeon has peace. Dismiss your servant in peace. That's a great message, isn't it, for 2020? It's a great message for us. There is a saviour who brings peace. Luke paints his story, not just with sombre colours, but he paints his story with words of love and words of hope. The love of the saviour. He loves us more than we could ever have hoped or imagined. And this saviour is ready to receive us. He is the saviour who brings peace. In verse 14 of, of chapter 2, the angels sang about the birth of Jesus and said, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace to men in whom his favour rests. And now, again, this idea of peace in verse 29. Simeon says, dismiss your servant in peace. Luke's really interested in this idea of peace. That God paints our lives with peace. Because we're so loved through Jesus Christ. Luke's picking up the Old Testament idea of shalom. That Jesus brings a deep and enduring peace. A tranquility of mind and heart. A sense of harmony and well-being from living under the care and love of the almighty creator, redeeming God in a world of tumult. So, you know, we're painting a picture of this, this, this suffering king. And we're also painting a pe picture of his people that involves um, hardship and suffering if we're going to go in the way of Jesus. But we're saying that at the heart of this picture, it's painted with love. Uh, it's painted with peace. And so I want to encourage you to, to, to know that peace yourself through knowing Jesus. Receiving Jesus and the salvation that he offers. And then living a life of devotion towards Jesus Christ. It's very noticeable in these first two chapters of Luke and in, in this story that we read today. Of how devout the people in the story are largely you know Simeon and Anna are two very devout people Simeon we're told in verse 25 uh, was righteous and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel the Holy Spirit is on him uh, the woman Anna is very old and we're told she's 84 and she never left the temple but worshipped day and night fasting and praying Lives of devotion. Great artists need great technique. There's a precision to the beauty that they create. And there's a technique to the way that these people live, isn't there? As they paint their lives with the beauty of the gospel, with the beauty of the love of Jesus, with the beauty of the peace of God, there's a technique to what's going on. Jesus' family, they're devout as well. They, they follow the practices of circumcision, um, of dedicating the firstborn child and of purification for Mary after childbirth. The, the technique of their lives is to follow the law of God and the path of God. To go the way of worship. So every day their lives are bent towards God in worship. This is the technique that allows them to live near to God. To paint their lives with the peace of God. Their minds and hearts are formed by scripture. Their, their, their minds and hearts are, are, are strengthened through their knowledges of the promises that God has given in his word. They rest in these great truths day by day. They pray. They worship. And so these patterns, these techniques of daily and weekly worship carry them along through the, through, through the hardships. As, as the wind pushes against them, as the tides of sorrow and sin push against them, they're, they're kept going because they're living in these habits, these techniques of worship, of prayer, of scripture. 2020 was a year for new habits. The number of people that I see out, or, or I see out exercising and running and walking 
seems to have risen a lot over the last year. If I go up Blackford Hill now, uh, there's so much, uh, so many more people at the top of Blackford Hill than I would ever have expected to see a year ago. More people exercising, more people out walking. Habits have changed. We've been forced to change the way we live. The way we spend time is different. The way we socialise is different. The way we work is different. The way we spend money is different. And in the midst of that, there's been an opportunity for new habits of worship, new habits of faith, of reading the Bible before you pick up your phone in the morning, of praying three times or five times through the day, of praying on your knees as opportunity allows, of praying with others, even if it's over Zoom. Early in the year, we thought about prayer a lot, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Uh, act, simple acronym to help us to pray. Techniques you can build into your life to let you uh, worship more on your own, with your family, with your friends. Lives of devotion. And devotion gives direction, doesn't it? It means you're, you're devoted to this one thing, to this one great idea or cause. Jesus, as a firstborn child, was dedicated by his parents as a servant of the Lord. That's right there in verse 23, if you want to check it out. His life belonged to God and to his service. And so if you're going to follow the way of Jesus, if you're going to make his story your story, then our lives also become dedicated to the service of God. When we enter the story of Jesus, it becomes our calling, our vocation, our life given to a new purpose and to a new destiny. We live to serve Jesus, to glorify him. Uh, we all have our part to play in this story. We all have our part to play in God's kingdom. We all have our own part to play in this picture. We've all got a role to fulfil. We're given gifts, both natural and spiritual. We're given resources. We're given opportunities that are unique to us. And so as you look ahead to 2021, I do hope that you're looking ahead with hope and anticipation because of Jesus, that your life will be painted with his love and peace, no matter the hardship of your circumstances. But I also hope that you're looking ahead with a sense of devotion and direction that 2021 will be a year to serve the Lord, to serve the King and his kingdom, to follow his call, to play your part in the work of the gospel. If you're a Christian, what does your Christian service look like in 2021? As we start the new year, it's quite often uh, the case that we'll make resolutions, isn't it? You know, and uh, sometimes these are um, eat less, get fitter, save more. Uh, quite often, um, very individualistic goals. But what are your goals and your longings for your relationships with family or with friends and church? What's your, what are your goals? How will you play your role in painting this world uh, more with God's love and peace? How will you bring more of God's love and peace to your home, to your family, to your neighbourhood, to your community, to Cornerstone or to your church? What will the, the habits and techniques of devotion look like as, as you seek to paint these beautiful colours? How will you bring more of God's grace to the table? How will you make life more of a feast for others? And I want to say, only through Jesus, by following him, by feasting on him, by letting his love cover your life. So take hold of Jesus for the first time today, or if you've been a Christian for a while or for many years, take hold of Jesus anew. At the end of one year, at the start of another, get hold of Jesus. Devote 
yourself to loving, worshipping and following him. Let me pray. Father in heaven, we do want to thank you for your word to us now. Bless it to us. Bring that change that we long for in our lives, that goodness, that light, that hope. Paint our lives with love and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, finish off by singing another word, another song of praise towards God. And uh, we're going to sing a Christmas song to close. Uh, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. with the benediction. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours now and forever. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Pray that you'll have a good week this coming week and uh, that God will be with you as you prepare to enter a new year. <laughs>